This video is about the four quadrant coordinate grid. Uh, there are three main goals that I want to go over when, uh, with this video is for you to be able to graph points in a four quadrant grid, identify the location of those points, and to use appropriate vocabulary including the words origin, quadrants, x-axis, y-axis, and ordered pair. You should already be familiar with using a one quadrant coordinate grid and uh, for our purposes, just to kind of briefly remind us, um, you're going to use an ordered pair whenever you graph on the coordinate grid. Um, the order is intentional. Uh, it's in order. The first term is always your x-axis, and then your second term is always your y-axis. As you can see labeled here, the x-axis is your horizontal axis, and your y-axis is your vertical axis, and they meet together at 0, 0, which is what we call the origin. Um, when you want to graph point A here, you're going to start at the origin, and because X is your 4 value, you're going to go over 4 units on the horizontal, and then up 2 units on the vertical axis, or the Y axis, and that's the location of 4, 2. Now, some people might want to write in 4, 2 there, but it's much more efficient because it's been labeled with an A, so just label that with A capital A. You'll notice the point is at the location, and the A is labeling the point. So when I go to label B, I'm going to go over 6 on the x-axis and then up 1 on the y-axis, and that's my label for point B. And then for point C, I'm going to go over 5, and then because my y-axis has a 0 value, I'm going to stay right on the x-axis at 5 comma 0. It's not going anywhere. And there you go. And you can see in the first two, I made my letter off to the right. Uh, here I made it off to the left. There's a real rule, just making sure you know which point goes with which. This is a little confusing because I've got three dots and three letters, um, so I'm sure that uh, in, you know, in this case I might want to make those letters a little closer to the points. Um, now what makes the four quadrant grid a little more challenging is we're going to be working with both a horizontal and a vertical number line that include negative integers. Now you've worked in class with horizontal number lines for ordering negative and positive integers, and you've worked with a vertical number line. In fact, we've used vertical number lines to describe uh, elevation, and we've used horizontal number line uh, to discuss like time uh, lapse. And so we can uh, use both of those. But the way that a four quadrant grid is, is both the horizontal and the vertical number lines come together. And that's what makes the four quadrants. And so uh, it gives us an opportunity to graph ordered pairs that include negative values. So uh, a couple of key vocabulary pieces that you should be aware of, again, is uh, your uh, vertical li line is your y-axis, and your horizontal is your x-axis. And whether you are using a four-quadrant grid or just a one-quadrant grid, you're still going to have 0, 0 as your uh, origin. Now you'll notice that this four quadrant grid includes that quadrant you've been working with. So, you know, those three points that I just graphed uh, a moment ago, you know, that basically is that upper uh, quarter. And that's actually quadrant one in a four quadrant grid. So, we'll graph a few points very uh, briefly here. And so you can see that our first coordinate, you can see, includes a, uh, a negative value in the x axis. Just a reminder, in the ordered pair, it's x, then y. So we're going to graph negative 2 comma 4. Now watch closely as I graph this in. I'm going to start at the origin. I'm going to move on my x-axis first over 2. And then that's a negative, but then my positive 4. So I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's where point A is located. For letter B, I'm going to start again at the origin. I'm going to move to the left 5 units. That's my x value. And then I'm moving down 2 units for my y value, and there's point B. Point 3 is going to be over positive 3, and then down 2, and that's point C. And letter D is going to uh, start at the origin, moving over 6 units, and then since it's got 0 as that second term, it's going to stay right on the x-axis. Now it's okay that I put the D up in that first quadrant, um, it needs to be labeled somewhere, but the point itself is not in that quadrant. It's actually laying on or upon the x-axis. Speaking of quadrants, it's important for you to know when you're graphing points is to know that we actually name our quadrants 
um, using Roman numerals. And so the quadrant you're accustomed to working with, that's positive uh, terms only, is what we call the quadrant one. Uh, and then we actually work um, counterclockwise here to identify which quadrant's which. I had a student in uh, class many years ago who suggested um, that you can remember the order of these by actually making a C. You know, it's called a coordinate grid, so you make a C. Start in the first quadrant, and then make the C. And that's the order, the counterclockwise order, one, two, then three, then four. Um, a few people want to call this quadrant one because they think, you know, just like reading a book, top left-hand corner, um, but clearly the quadrant you always have started with in the past is quadrant one. And with quadrant one, your coordinates will always be um, those um, positive coordinates. So if we go back and look at our example here, um, you can see that our uh, answer for a, our point A was actually located in the second quadrant. Okay, that's where point A is. And point B was in the third quadrant, and point C was in the fourth quadrant. And like I said before, point D was on the axis. So it's not in a quadrant at all. That's going to matter because one of the things we're going to require students to do is not only to identify points or to draw points, but also to be able to identify the location of the point. So um, it's a little bit hard to read uh, the printing here, but it's asking for the location of point A here. And you can see point A, if I started at the origin, I have to go over three units and then up one. So my coordinates are three comma one. And the location of point A is clearly in quadrant one. And if it's helpful, you can of course label quadrant one, quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four. You can see it's using Roman numerals, which you may or may not have familiarity with. Um, and so that's how it's labeled. Um, so for point B, I'm gonna go to the left two units and then down two units. So that's a negative two, negative two. So um, we have two negative coordinates here, and that would be in quadrant three. So for point A was in quadrant one, and point three was in, or point B was in quadrant three. Point C, as you can see, I'm gonna go over to the left two units and then up four units. So that's a negative two, positive four, and that would be located in quadrant three. Point D, I'm going to go over one and up two. Those are both positive, um, so my coordinates would be one comma two, and that's in quadrant one. Point E, I'm going to go over two and then down two, so that's a positive and a negative, and that's in quadrant four. Point F is going to be um, over nothing and then down four, so that's a zero comma negative four. But notice, that's not in a quadrant. The letter is in the quadrant, but the point is not. This is actually on the y-axis. And then as I move on to point G, you can see that I'm going to the left four units and up two. So it's negative four, comma two. And that is in quadrant two. Point H is going to be over four units and then down four units. That's both negative coordinates. And that's in quadrant three. Point I, all the way here, on the axis, so I'm going over four units, but then down nothing. So that answer is on the X axis. And then finally, point J, you can see right here, is over four, down four. That's a positive four and a negative four, and that's clearly in quadrant four. So you'll notice all the items in quadrant four are E and J, and quadrant um, two is C and G. Um, it's really important as you go through to take your time. Uh, I could not recommend more um, the idea of looking online for qu four quadrant grid games. I have a few um, labeled on my e-board that are great for practice because they give you instant response as to whether you're graphing them correctly. Um, this is a skill that is best practiced um, you know, early and often so that you're sure of it before it comes time for an assessment. Thanks for sticking around until the end.